Good morning and welcome to Morning Movie News. Today we're going to talk all about screenwriters. Uh, some of my favorite people in Hollywood, as many of you know, because I feel they're not only integral to the movie making progress, but they don't really get enough respect in Hollywood. So I'm always happy to see them uh, making headlines and potentially improving their situation. Uh, but we'll see with today's stories what you, if you think that's the case. The first involves Star Wars. Now I'm sure many of you saw this headline yesterday about the, you know, the switcheroo they've done over at Lucasfilm or Disney Lucasfilm. Lucasfilm uh, for Star Wars Episode 7. Michael Arndt, who uh, is the screenwriter obviously on Little Miss Sunshine, and I think fans are more excited about the fact he was the screenwriter on Toy Story 3, had been brought into script the new trilogy. Uh, he is still outlining it, but he is he's either dropped off, pulled off himself, you know, been taken off, but he is no longer going to be writing the actual script for Episode 7. Instead, that'll be done jointly by J.J. Abrams and Lawrence Kasdan. Now, I am very excited about this Lawrence Kasdan news. He wrote the second, uh, the you know, episodes uh, five and six of Star Wars. You know, the second and third of the original films. He did a wonderful job. Obviously, I really liked what he did. Uh, so I'm excited to see him back. I'm excited to see original blood back on the uh, on the franchise. I think that's wonderful. I think Kasdan's a great writer, and he comes from a time in Hollywood. Uh, you know, when I think screenwriting, you know, uh, largely the 80s and stuff, when screenwriting I think was taken a little more seriously. He's an old school screenwriter, and I think that that's exactly what Star Wars needs. Now, do I wish he was doing this by himself? Yes, I do. I think that J.J. Abrams is a weak screenwriter. I think that his screenwriting capabilities or his meddling in scripts, uh, and he didn't write the Star Trek films that he's worked on or the second one, but he didn't, he didn't recognize the problems either. So, but I think maybe he's very good at know, knowing humor and, you know, maybe putting some modern touches. So we'll see. Hopefully this is a good combination. Uh, it's, it's, and it's good and bad news for the Star Wars franchise. I think this is obviously not an ideal headline for them to have. Uh, it makes me somewhat concerned that they won't be ready for their 2015 date, even though it's the end of 2015. It's rumored to come out for the holiday season, uh, you know, in December, Christmas, basically. Uh, so I'm concerned about that. But I am happy at the same time that... Clearly, Kathleen Kennedy and company are taking the script seriously. They realize this is an important stage of making this Episode 7 and relaunching the franchise or, you know, winning back the fan base who were turned off big time by the prequels. Uh, and so I'm glad that they're taking that, this, level, this level of attention at the screenwriting level instead of just, uh, you know, rushing through it to get to that date, which Hollywood so often does now. They pick these release dates uh, far in advance, and to make sure that they make them, they cut corners, and oftentimes it's, you know, in the screenwriting process. Sometimes we've heard of them starting filming without even having a script. So I'm glad that this is taking place, and I'm very happy to see Lawrence Kasdan back on. And truth be told, I'm not the biggest Toy Story 3 fan. I'm sorry. I thought it was a little emotionally manipulative. Uh, and so I'm not going to be, I'm not particularly sad that Michael Arndt is off the gig. So that's the first story of the day. Uh, the second is that while, despite The Fifth Estate being the, the worst uh, box office opener for a film and wide release this year, uh, Bill Condon has another gig. He has been hired to rewrite the Barnum and Bailey uh, biography uh, for Hugh Jackman. Now this sounds like a wonderful project, despite the fact that Bill Condon is working on it. That makes me very nervous. But the idea of uh, telling the story of, uh, you know, uh, P.T. Barnum, I believe is the name, who, who invented the circus, basically, and it's supposed to be a musical, I believe, with Hugh Jackman in the lead role, and then they're putting this new director on here, Michael Gracie is the name, let me just make sure that's right, yes, Michael Gracie, he is a commercials guy, known for special effects and dancing, uh, this just seems like a great team up to me, and I think we could potentially have a very exciting movie, and Hugh Jackman, you know, that guy's, you know, after a really rocky start and not being able to find any projects that were viable outside of Wolverine with Les Mis and then Prisoners and now this, uh, you know, I'm very excited for him that he stuck it out and it seems to be paying off finally. So this sounds like a cool project to me. And on a side note, can you believe that Michael Gracie's expertise would be special effects and dancing and Hollywood would find two projects for him that are perfect? Not only this Barnum and Bailey movie or P.T. Barnum musical, but the fact that he's also going to be doing Rocket Man, the Elton John movie with Tom Hardy in the lead. So that's very exciting. He's supposed to be really good with, you know, interesting visuals. So I hope we can have something maybe along the lines of Across the Universe, the Julie uh, Taymor uh, Beatles movie, which I actually thought was really touching. It kind of went off the rails a little bit towards the middle or the last third, but it's still a very good movie, very fascinating, very beautiful. So if they can have someone step up and bring that to even the next level of quality in terms of storytelling, uh, that could be very exciting. So that's the second story of the day. 
The third is that uh, John Ridley, I, you know, just to make sure I get the names right, John Ridley is uh, a screen, the screenwriter behind 12 Years a Slave. He also wrote Red Tails, and he's an African-American screenwriter. Just yesterday, uh, one of you, I answered the qu viewer question about uh, African-American talent making films that weren't just, you know, directed at African-Americans. I can see where, you know, 12 Years a Slave and, uh, and Red Tails are obviously feature African-Americans in the lead roles. Uh, but still, or, or I guess, you know, black actors, because Chiwetel Ejiofor is British, uh, from the UK, I believe. So, but still, he, the success there, as I said, he, now John Ridley has success. Red Tails wasn't considered a success. But now that he's getting Oscar buzz for his screenplay for 12 Years a Slave, here it goes. We're seeing it happen. He is being considered, or actually landed the gig, for the Ben-Hur remake, to write that. So that's fantastic. You're seeing him being immediately rewarded and working on a film that is both epic, uh, mainstream blockbuster status and does not is not you know quote unquote African American entertainment. So that's very exciting. Now, to some degree, I question whether or not someone should remake Ben Hur. They said this is going to play more into some of the historical significance of the character and how he like ran into Jesus apparently. Uh, so that's interesting. Also, there's the obvious slave parallel. Twelve Years a Slave is obviously about slavery, but of course Ben Hur was sold into slavery. So that's interesting. But of course, the original Ben Hur film with Charlton Heston is such a classic. Uh, you know, you question whether or not why you would want to remake that. Uh, it's like trying to say, well, let's remake Gone with the Wind. However, I will say, well, while Gone with the Wind holds up, in my opinion, I recently watched Ben Hur maybe about a year or so ago, and I didn't think it held up as well. There's also, if you haven't seen the film or if you want to watch it again, I just look out for the fact that there are some very, you know, there's some pretty obvious uh, gay undertones, just like there are in Spartacus with Tony Curtis's character. Uh, so I think you have to be, you know, somewhat impressed with the forward thinking for the filmmakers at that time. But it's just like when you see Rope. When I saw, when I've seen, I've seen Rope a number of times. It's Hitchcock's uh, film about. Uh, to gay lovers who were murderers, and uh, it's really the first film in Hollywood to be about uh, have to portray uh, homosexuality, uh, and it was very controversial for that reason. But when you watch the movie, it's somewhat obvious, I think, that Jimmy Stewart is totally unaware of the homosexual context, or has decided just to ignore it and not not play that. Uh, so I think that that's always a fascinating thing to me. But I, the reason I bring it up is when you watch Ben Hur, there are some gay, um, there are some gay undertones with uh, Charlton Heston, you know, and Ben Hur's care, uh, relationship with the, the you know the official that takes him in to, uh, in this maybe the uh, two thirds or halfway through the movie. But it's fascinating to watch because Charlton Heston seems totally oblivious to the undertones, and I don't think he's a good enough actor that he, that's just what's going on. I, I think that. Uh, I think anyone would, usually, if anyone was at all alert, they would pick up what that senator was throwing down. But uh, Charlton Heston, I, I mean, I think nobody told him, and they just were like, just don't, just don't tell Charlie. I don't think you'd be too happy about it. Uh, let's just film the movie, and p uh, the audience can either pick up on it or not. So I think that's very interesting, uh, and I thought it was something that surprised me when I watched the film, because the first time I'd seen it, I was very young. Uh, so that, that was, it's always funny to see. It's funny to see Hollywood changing. Uh, subversively and sometimes the, their, their biggest stars don't recognize that they're a part of that change. But so I think so those are three films where screenwriters are getting uh, some nice headlines. All right so the viewer question of the day comes from uh, Christian Flores. I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. Uh, it's this question. Do you think we'll ever see a Catwoman movie? I really loved Anne in the Dark Knight Rises and if so do you think they will continue with his vision or reimagine her in the new Superman Batman universe? Thanks. Thanks for your question, uh, Christiane. I really appreciate it. Uh, I have to say, I love Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman. She is still my favorite. And when everyone was saying how good Anne Hathaway was in the role, particularly Christopher Nolan, who himself suggested that she get her own movie, I was like, yeah, right, no one's going to be as good as Michelle Pfeiffer in the role. But I was really impressed with what Anne Hathaway did with the part. So much so that I felt bad that she was a little shortchanged in terms of screen time because the movie was just too crowded. One of my chief complaints about The Dark Knight Rises. Uh, but you know, while Christopher Nolan was pushing for her to get her own film, and Anne Hathaway, I think, was definitely game, she said, as long as Christopher Nolan was involved, that's the big asterisk there with all of his cast and why you're not, probably not going to see any of them return. Uh, it's because I think Christopher Nolan is done. He's moved on to Interstellar. That is, uh, they traded the that to, I believe it, you know, um, that's not just a Warner Brothers project. 
Uh, and they're t obviously taking these films in a very different direction. Now, as some people have said, I think his name is still on there as an as a executive producer, although he wasn't listed in the press release for the Ben Affleck casting, which a lot of people said was very notable. Uh, he might just be collecting a paycheck off the movies at this point, which he's totally earned. But I think creatively, he's not, this is just not what he did. And I think that that's important. I think if Christopher Nolan isn't going to actively be involved in the movies, he can't just like keep a toe in. He has to let them, let it go and let somebody else develop it and make it into something new and interesting. I think the DC Cinematic Universe can't survive if it's going to be continue to weigh, be weighed down partially by Nolan's films because they're not continuing them. So if you can't continue them partially, I think they just need to become something else. And it's not fair to Ben Affleck. So I think Anne Hathaway is done as Catwoman. Uh, I don't know. And also, I think they're going to move into Justice League territory. I hope that we see a Wonder Woman before we see Catwoman again. That would be, I think, her third time around on the big screen. Uh, and Wonder Woman hasn't even gotten one chance. Although, I just think Catwoman's an easier character for the big screen. And I think more well-known to audiences. I think Wonder Woman has a lot to overcome. And just like Superman in terms of, I guess, the quote-unquote cornball factor. But if she does ever come back, I think she'll be totally redefined by a different actress. Uh, but it's a shame. Both Catwoman did a wonderful job, and they both were supposed to get their own movies, and they never did, uh, which is just really unfortunate because it's so unusual for a female comic book character to exist at all. They aren't really depicted often, but to have two actresses nail it and in such different ways. But I really, really thought that Anne Hathaway did a great job, and she deserves the credit for doing such a nice job. And she even pulled off the idea that her character wore high heels. They made them functional, which I thought would be impossible to do, but the way that they were also a knife, I thought was impressive. So anyway, uh, that's today's morning movie news. Thank you for everybody for tuning in. Please comment down below on today's stories, uh, the viewer question, and anything you'd like to see covered on Monday, and any questions you'd like answered. Thanks for watching. Bye.